Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right. For a while now, I've been talking to people about this huge up-and-coming market crash. I started being louder about it in a Facebook group that I had called The Hidden Things in Front of Your Eyes back in 2015. Everybody kept telling me, oh, the market looks so good, this is impossible. I said, you got to understand that when the markets get ready to crash, crash, is when the markets look the most beautiful. I know that sounds crazy, but that's the truth. I noticed there was all kinds of bubbles. I said, there's a real estate bubble. There's a stock market bubble. There's tech bubbles. I mean, you can see them all there. In the past, whenever we had a bubble pop fix, mostly the markets here in our country, uh, if you're in another country and you have a bubble there and it pops, it mostly affects you there locally. But in this case, there is multiple bubbles. I thought to myself, well, if I'm right about this, this is going to be really bad because it's going to start a chain reaction. So I started warning people, telling them they should buy gold and silver just to be on the safe side. And although people are talking about getting into real estate, which is usually one of the safest investments to have, I said, that's probably not a good idea because you could see there was a real estate bubble as well. But there was a benefit to all this. <laughs> this is just my opinion. You know, if you own properties, you might want to sell them. Stock bonds you want to get rid of and sell them. Be cash ready because once the market is done crashing, this gives you an opportunity to buy in on investments at a much, much cheaper price than it was before the crash. You can see a scenario stocks drop as much as 50, 60 percent. So imagine picking up a Tesla stock when it does settles 60 percent cheaper than where it is. You know, your favorite stocks, picking them up for pennies on a dollar. Because that's what happened. This is how the rich get rich. They hold on to their cash. They wait for the dust to clear. And then they go right back into these investments. And then ride the wave back up. You could do the same thing with real estate. Houses that you see out there for three, four hundred thousand, they'll drop down to around hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand. So if you own property, let's say you had a house that sold for four hundred fifty thousand. Once the dust settles, you might see that same house for somewhere around 250000 225000 The same house. That means the house is upside down with the current buyers. You're going to see a lot of homes foreclosed on. There's going to be a lot of houses that are on the books of banks that they don't want. That means you're going to be able to make offers to the bank to pick up the houses for way cheaper than where it was before. So the money you save by selling your properties, you can now turn around and reinvest them back into real estate. But let's say you sold your house for $450,000 and all of a sudden you see two houses that you like. Each one of them is $225,000. i am just using round numbers and oversimplifying it. So you can pay cash for two houses now. Instead of owning one, you can own two. These are the types of things you should think about. Being cash ready. Having money available. The only problem with this time around is the cash itself. With the rumors of the central bank digital currency looming, it makes it kind of hard to know what direction to go into. So I'm going to take the safest route, which is invest in the precious metals. It keeps me out of the system and also keeps its purchasing power. But somebody in the group noticed the other day, because they'd like to do this. A lot of people know how much I think uh, gold and silver is the right investment to be in. There's crypto people out there that don't like that. They think crypto is the way to go. So every time gold drops like $10, $20, $40, they're like, aha, like that aha moment. I'm like, nah, nothing. It does that. As people manipulate the prices, you'll see gold drop down anywhere between $20 and $50. It's no big deal because what you'll notice is a week later, it's already recovered. Silver, the same thing. It'll go from close to $25, drop down to maybe $23.25. I'm just making these numbers up. But you get the point. They drop and then they turn around and recover. But what happens during the crash? What happens to gold and silver along with other assets? So let's go over that here in just a moment. Before we get started, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, please do so. Because when you do, it helps out the channel. And I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold, silver, or any other precious metals, head on over to our friends at Money Metals Exchange. The link is down below in the description. Or just type in www moneymetals.com forward slash pimpy if you make a purchase when you follow that link you will automatically be entered for a chance to win 10 free silver ounces so get started today and hopefully your stack will start to look like this real soon
So head on over, tell them Pimpy sent you. You can follow me over on other platforms. I do have a, my own group over on Facebook called Pimby's Investment Chat. Over here, we do talk about gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, as well as foreign currency investments. So head on over here and join us. It's free to do so. In here, I do post updates. If I should get on suspension from YouTube or get removed from YouTube and you want to know what happened to me, I'll let you know right here in this group. I can be found on Twitter, MeWe, YouTube. And the cool thing about YouTube, if you come over here and you join and you find my channel, I got videos going back, I believe, a couple years. So if you want to see some older videos that I have on Nisera Jacera, gold, silver, cryptos, come on over here and join. Look me up and check out my videos. You can also find me on Odyssey. Catch me on Rumble. When I see that the links for all these are down below in the description, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, it's real simple. Just go down to the bottom right here of any of my videos, see this, this is the description. Hit show more, and there are all the links to all the platforms I just spoke about. So if you do wanna head on over to Money Middles, just click it, and there you are. So come on over, join us, I look forward to having you. This September 29th through October the 1st, come on out and join us in Vegas at Caesars Palace. I'll be attending the Silver Symposium as well as a lot of your favorite YouTubers. This will give you an opportunity to do a meet and greet, ask questions, take pictures, while at the same time learning a lot about the industry. There will be crypto people there as well as precious metal people. Use promo code PIMPY and save 10% off your ticket. Also, they will be giving away silver rounds. So how can you pass up on silver? Besides, this is Vegas. An excuse to come on out there and have a lot of fun. Besides receiving uh, silver rounds, you do have a chance to win more silver as prizes at this event. So who knows? You could show up and walk away with a lot of silver. Now, somebody just told me that Lynette Zhang is going to be there as well. So I believe Chris Marcus, Lynette Zhang, Economic Ninja, Andy Shetman, just to name a few people that we are familiar with will be at this event. This is a big event, you guys, so come on over and join us. This is a great time for you to uh, get a lot of your questions answered and uh, learn a whole lot about precious metals. Especially with everything going on in our economy, this is a, the right time to learn. So what's going on with cryptocurrencies? I see that Bitcoin is now below 29,000, not by much, but uh, I heard a gentleman speaking about Bitcoin dropping down to around 15,000. I don't know if it's going to drop that far, but I wouldn't be surprised if it got closer to about 22,000 than 15,000. So Bitcoin's at 20,977. Ethereum's at $1,829. XRP is coming back down to reality. It's back around 65 cents. Dogecoin's at 7 cents. Cardano is at 29 cents. Solana is at $22.94. Polygon is at $0.66, cents. Litecoin's at $81.51, Polkadot's at $4.96, Shiba's at $5.086, Terra Luna Classic is at $4.078, Satama is at $3.078, Gold is currently at $1,940.30 per ounce, up $7, Silver is currently at $23.54, Alrighty, so whenever the market starts to crash or hit in a downward spiral, you're going to see a few things happen. You're going to see, obviously, the stocks start to run in red, and it will be consistently over time. You'll also see the same thing happen to stuff like precious metals. They will drop in value. That's because as unemployment increases, benefits run out, people's stock portfolios and uh, IRAs and 401ks are tanking, all their retirement money is disappearing. They usually get desperate for money, and what you'll see them do is start selling their precious metals. So the precious metals market starts to get flooded with precious metals, uh, driving the value down. But don't be misled by this. I told people this in the past, and I was right. You'll have people who need money and have no choice, so they sell their precious metals. It does flood the market. It does cause the precious metal to go down. The difference is precious metals doesn't drop by very much. And then rebounds really quick. I showed that plenty of times, like in March of 2020. So it will drop, not by a lot, but still drop. Because people are selling off their precious metals. Then it rebounds. Then you see it shoot up to new highs. And it does it fairly quick. So if you're able to hold on to your precious metals and tough it out, just hang tight. Because as the market crashes, precious metals will go up in value big time. So that's how the rich get richer. They prepare themselves for this. They become cash ready. 
things that they had they know that are about to lose value you'll see them uh, sell them off whether it's a painting whether it's a specific stocks they might not sell 100 percent of the stock but they might turn around and sell you know 50 60 70 percent of the stock still holding on to a little bit of it if they have a few houses they'll consider selling it while the market is high and then hold on to the cash and ready to turn around and buy even more homes once the market is done crashing. So I was chatting with people about banks. People are going, Pimpy, have the banks stopped collapsing? I was like, no, they, they're just not talking about it as much. Some people are, some people aren't, all right? I believe Economic Ninja uh, talks about the banks, and which is a good thing. I'm glad he brings it up. I should bring it up more often. But people should be aware of this because this is a systematic takedown of our banking institutions. This is done on purpose. This is a planned event. I explained it several times. The people who are benefiting are people like uh, Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan. They want to take the banks and put them in control of a handful of people, which is bad. So Farmington State Bank, the tiny Eastern Washington Bank tied to FTX collapse and it will close. Remember when the other two banks collapsed, they said, well, this one was tied to the crypto industry. They start tying the bank collapse to things like crypto as an excuse. Oh, cryptos are bad. Look what it did to these banks. No, the people managing the banks were the ones that made bad decisions. Or did they really make bad decisions? Or did they purposely do what it took to collapse the banks? So Farmington State Bank. Some of these banks you might not hear about. That's what I mean. All the small neighborhood banks are slowly but surely collapsing. Pretty soon you won't have no options. You'll have to go into the banks that are left over. And that's when they'll do something like force the central bank digital currency on you. If you're free from the system by having gold and silver, then you don't have to worry about the central bank digital currency. You'll learn to trade and barter with precious metals. So Farmington State Bank with its tiny historic building and a big online aspiration that ensnared it in the snowballing collapse of the cryptocurrency trade FTX and its CEO Sam Bankman Freed has sent letters to its customers announcing its pending closure. There you have another bank that's closing. The funny thing is, uh, I don't think anything is going to happen to this Sam Bankman Freed. He's going to end up with a fine and a freaking probation, if anything. The bank, one of the few businesses still operating in a Whitman County farming town of about 150 people. So if you live in a small town and you have that one bank, once that bank's gone, what are your options? Then you have to go way out of your way to go banking or you have to use the internet to go banking, which is what you don't want to do. So this town has 150 people. It announced it's getting ready to close, telling customers that their deposits and their bank accounts have been sold to the Bank of Eastern Oregon, which has a branch in Colfax. So what does that mean? Can they go to that bank and take out their money if they wanted to? Of course, this would cause a bank run. Since Farmington's Director of Business Operations confirmed that the Bank of Eastern Oregon has acquired Farmington's accounts held by the borrower and depositor. So most of the time, if you have a loan for houses, if you have a loan for cars, that's what gets transferred over to the banks. So yes, the banks continue to collapse. Most of them are small. They do it in such a way that it's not noticeable so a panic doesn't happen and everybody starts running to the bank taking out money because they realize that there's a bank collapse happening everywhere. Now this is a biggie, of course. They tried to bail out Credit Suisse before, but it looks like it didn't work. So Credit Suisse collapse is upending the deal-making pecking order. It's fair game for up-and-coming banks. So currently, there are bank after bank that appears to be collapsing. Some of it is getting some coverage by media, but very low-key. Others are a much bigger issue that is uh, talked about in the mainstream media. But although I noticed there are banks closing down, I went ahead on the internet to search for a list of new banks that have opened. Are there new banks opening or are we just losing our banks? I have not been able to find a list of new banks that are opening. I did find a, a list, I think, of three banks in the UK. But as far as the United States, uh, you know, I got to do a little bit more of a better search. I just kind of quickly looked and didn't find anything. So Credit Suisse is one of the biggest banks out there. So to have one of the biggest banks out there to collapse is bad because it sends out a ripple around the world. The crazy thing is this article is focusing on the so-called deal makers, how they went from one bank to another. And they're focusing on the senior deal makers and how banks have an opportunity to pick up some really good employees to hire with their company. But my thing is this, why would I want to hire executives that are responsible for the collapse of their own banks? You know? <laughs> Just throwing it out there. 
You can see right here, the fallout has been brutal with around 120 senior deal makers departing from rivals, including Citibank, Deutsche Bank, Evercore, and Centender. Within four months, hiring freezes at banks were lifted and seemingly cash-strapped firms found a way to bring talent through the door at the relatively bargain price as stock options at Credit Suisse disappeared. So the article, instead of talking about how bad this is for people in the economy, they're more focused on how great this is for other banks that are surviving to pick up some great employees. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, head on out to the Silver Symposium. This will give you a chance to ask great questions, learn new things, and possibly pick up precious metals and some of the prizes that they're giving away. Everybody has a reason why they're into Bitcoin. Everybody has their reasons why they think real estate is the right investment. Everybody has a reasons to say that, no, my stock portfolio is doing good. Stay in stocks. I get all that. But when the doo-doo hits the fan and all those start tanking, I guarantee you the one, the one asset that is going to survive this storm absolutely is going to be precious metals. Anyways, that's it for now, you guys. Let me know what you think. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm out.